It is time to stop tiptoeing, stop straddling the fence, stop dating the idea that you can be successful, and it's time to get married to it. Get married to it, get committed, get all in. You keep dating it, you keep thinking about it, you keep talking about it. Be the anomaly. Be the one who can step into a room and shift the atmosphere with a confidence and a resilience and a grit because you put the work in. When nobody was paying attention, you paid the price. It is possible to fully commit yourself to something. It is possible to accomplish what you see in your hand, to hold it in your hand. It is possible. The question is, can you give your all? One day I just woke up and I told myself I would never be broke or broken again. But let's be honest, a lot of what we do is for the attention of everybody. I'm thinking to myself, when are we gonna do this thing? Cause we're just called to do it. I don't need to impress you, are we understanding this? I need to acknowledge what they did, what they said, what they did not do, how they lied, how they punctured, how they fractured. This is a command to leave your past behind. This is a charge to you in this moment to let it go. You gotta let it go. Listen up. One day I just woke up and I told myself I would never be broke or broken again. You are a moment, you are a memory. Get the narrative out of your head that I can't afford to change. Working out is free. Cutting toxic people out of your life is free. Are we understanding this? It's free. And if it's not free, the price is not as high as you've been playing yourself to believe it is. Somebody is waiting to make the connection with you. This is the day that you smile more. This is the day that you believe. This is the day that you see the future. This is the day that you step into hope, that you step into joy. This is the day that you repay people's rudeness with kindness. This is the day that you are not easily triggered. This is the day that you snap out of it. This is the day that you pray for your haters, that you forgive those who have wronged you. This is that day. This is the day that everything is going to change because change started with you. I had enough. I wanted to make sure my mother was good for the rest of her life. I wanted to make sure my wife didn't have to work another day in her life. I wanted to make sure I could sow into my family that I could advance the human race forward. Why am I here? And the moment that I discovered that, everything began to change. And so I realized that I don't have time to waste. Every millisecond is accounted for. And it doesn't matter how I failed yesterday. It doesn't matter who did not accept me, who rejected me, who overlooked me, who undervalued me, who stabbed me in my back, who did not see my value. None of that matters. Yesterday is gone. All I have is the present. All you have is the present. What are you going to do with the day? How are you going to level up? How are you going to go to the next level? Because everybody wants to have a fantastic day, but nobody wants to plan it. You don't get great haphazardly. You don't get great accidentally. You don't have an incredible day without putting work into it. And so the question I want to ask you is this, are you planning your day? Because good days don't just happen, they are engineered, they are planned. You don't just get where you want to go because you want to go there. You have to do something, you have to become someone. They call it future pacing or future progression. It's a mental rehearsal, it's putting yourself in the future right now in the present and it's you seeing yourself where you're supposed to be seeing yourself fulfilling your destiny seeing yourself living where you're supposed to live driving what you're supposed to drive seeing yourself fulfilling the purpose and the calling that's on your life it's it's a mental rehearsal sometimes life can get cumbersome and difficult and daunting and it requires, and the 
present requires you to think on the weight of glory that awaits you in the future. Sometimes, in order for me to get to the future, I do need to think about it. I do need to meditate on the future just a little bit, not just plan, but see myself in the future. See myself walking the walk, talking the talk. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know how broken you are. If you're battered and bleeding, and I don't know if you're sinking in quicksand metaphorically, but I'm just wondering if there's somebody out there that will see the hope of a future, that will see that tomorrow doesn't have to be today. And you may be in one of the biggest battles of your life, but you are at the precipice of a blessing. Man, I believe that blessings and battles can happen all at the same time. I'm just wondering if there's anybody that's listening to me that believes that if you're going to win the day, if you're going to win the week, if you're going to win the month, the quarter, the year, then you've got to plan it. You need schedules and parameters and frameworks and protocols. You've got to get your stuff in order. Type in the chat, get your house in order. Type in the comments, get your house in order. Get your head in order. If you want the future, come on, watch your mindset, watch your mouth, watch your money, watch your relationships. You want your future? You need to get organized. You're going to have to set an alarm and wake up at times you don't feel like getting up. You're going to have to do what you don't feel like doing consistently to snap out of motivation and break into discipline. Because discipline is not about what I feel like doing. Discipline is a duty. Discipline is what I've been called to do. Discipline is what I was born to do. Discipline is what is required to get to that next level. It's not about what I feel. It's not about a feeling. I'm not approaching destiny sensually. I am approaching destiny on the wings of discipline. I need a routine. I need to get to sleep so I can wake up at the appropriate time. Man, you gotta start going to bed. You gotta start getting the rest that is required to power your day. When we sleep, we get refueled, we get re-energized, we can reimagine, we can position ourselves for an incredible day. I ask people all the time, you wanna do something? Write it down, because if it's not scheduled, most likely you won't do it. When I write something down, it's scheduled, and when it's scheduled, it mandates what I do. Write it down. You want it? Write it down. You see it in your future? Write it down. You want to make that move? Write it down. Before you say something, write it down. Motivational and transformational speakers all throughout history have asked the question, man, how hungry are you? It's your time, it's your turn, this is the hour, this is the season, this is the moment that you have been waiting for. And there are people that are waiting on you to manifest. I gotta start exercising, I gotta start getting the sleep that is required to fuel the life that I see in my head. I'm absolutely puzzled at the amount of people that I've come across over the course of my life that want new area codes, new zip codes, new houses, new cars, new networks, and they don't want to change. They don't want to grow. They don't want to give. They don't want to evolve their thinking. They want to stay in the same place, but they want to move as fast as a Lamborghini. They want to go, but they don't want to grow. It's unbelievable. In the arena of life, when we look at one team against another, whether it's the field or the court or the gym, the opponent in the ring, in the cage, it doesn't matter. Both teams practice in the arena of life. Everybody's practicing something. Everybody has a program. And the question you have to ask yourself is, is your program working for you now? If you want a different output, you gotta change the input. We all wanna go somewhere, but we don't wanna read the books that are required to get there. We don't wanna follow through with the disciplines and the schedules and the frameworks that are required to get us where we gotta go. I wanna lose weight. I want this physique. I want my health to be here, but I don't wanna walk. I don't wanna run. I don't wanna change my eating. I don't wanna update my circle of influence. For many of you, 
the reason why your, your life hasn't changed is because your atmosphere hasn't changed and your atmosphere reveals where your focus is. You have people in your life, there are habits that you've held on to that are keeping you locked in this place and you're begging to leave, but you haven't been disciplined enough and hungry enough to change, to level up in your thinking, to shift relationship dynamics, to walk in a deeper measure of emotional intelligence. Like the life that you want is gonna require a different you today. And so I'm just wondering that if there's anybody listening to me out there that wants to go to that next dimension. Today is my day that everything changes in my future because I'm gonna to change today. And so we need to not just have a prepared message, but we need to be a prepared people. If you're going to be a college professor or a captain of industry or a keynote speaker or some type of lecturer or some type of leader or some type of innovator or orator or facilitator, it's not enough to just have a prepared message. You've got to be a prepared person. If you're going to punch through your targets today, you're going to have to plan it. In the arena of life, he who practiced well will play well. He who practiced great will play great. What does practice do? Practice prepares us. The reason why your days don't go the way you anticipate, you hoped they would go, is because you're stepping into your day without a plan. You are directionless. You are not groomed. You are not prepared. Whoever you are and wherever you are, if you can hear my voice, you made it another day. And that's something to get excited about. Even if you've lost all hope and you've lost all motivation, I need you to understand that you can recover it all right now. You may not have all the motivation. You may not have all the peace about your situation. You may not be exactly where you want to be. If you can hear my voice, you made it one more day and that is worth something. You are a moment, you are a memory. Everybody that you encounter today, lives will be marked forever because you brought your A-game. You brought everything you could to touch that life. And you may never be here again. So today, give it all you have. Our lives don't get better by chance. They get better by change. Change is one of the necessary laws of life. Remember this, action and adaptability create opportunity. Adapt and overcome and watch everything change before your eyes. Adaptability isn't just some secret for survival. It is the power to build the future. Adaptability is the capacity to be modified for a new purpose, to be moved this way and still punch through targets and reach my goals and be everything I've been called to be, but I've got to adapt to the times. Adaptability requires movement. Adaptability requires growth. Adaptability requires wisdom and knowledge and understanding and revelation and awareness. We've got to be able to recognize when we're outdated, when we need an upgrade, when we've got to go to that next level, and I can't be embarrassed about it. Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is understanding that in order for me to have this lifestyle that I see in my head, I'm going to have to raise my standards. This is an adjustment. This is a modification that in times past, this version of me was good enough, but it only got me where I am. And in order for me to go to that next level, something inside of me has to change. So when you face storm, when you face adversity, when you face trial, when you face tribulation, in the eye of the storm, in the middle, in the core of your devastation, when you are faced with opposition, that's when you raise the heat. You don't change your message, you change your methodology. Are you understanding me? 
Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is not losing your moral compass. Adaptability is raising your voice. And so the harder life hits me, the harder I'm going to fight, the harder I'm going to believe, the harder I'm going to keep pushing, I'm going to keep going, I will persevere, and I'm going to build resilience. And so the harder life hits, the stronger I get. You've got problem-solving skill. You've got a resilience. You have a determination. You have a measure of commitment that nobody in the room has because you've been able to adapt. And for many of us, we are in the halftime of our destiny. And if you're going to win, you are going to have to make the adjustments, the necessary modifications to have your future. When I become more flexible, more agile, more adaptable, another thing that happens is that we build our inner resilience. And this isn't just about honing in on your problem solving skills, but resilience literally changes your brain. It changes your operating systems. It shifts your behavior. Resilience empowers you to build new habits. It's not running from your programming. It's upgrading. It's taking it to the next level. The necessary growth strategies, necessary modification, personality adjustment, attitude upgrades, the necessary, the wise adapt themselves to the circumstances like water molds itself to the pitcher. To understand the revelation of adaptability is to realize that life is lived on levels. I've got angles, I've got approaches, that destiny is in the details. It's how I see this thing. It's how I can adjust my thinking. It's how I can upgrade my inter software. At some point, you gotta sit back and think to yourself, you know what, I've been here too long. I've thought like this too long, I've hurt too long, I've been fractured long enough, I've been depressed long enough. You know what? I've been here too long. It's time for me to go. We all have to get here where we realize we have not adapted to the current times. And this is not a departure from authenticity. This is not losing yourself. This is finding your next level. The question is, are you willing to adapt? Adaptability is the bridge to the future. I need to be able to adapt cognitively. I gotta be able to adapt emotionally. My personality, my behavior, my language, my thinking. I've got to be able to adapt and it is only when I'm willing to accept this reality that I can have my future. When I become more flexible, more agile, more adaptable, Another thing that happens is that we build our inner resilience. And this isn't just about honing in on your problem-solving skills. But resilience literally changes your brain. It shifts your behavior. It's time to break through. You've lost long enough. You've been in your learning season long enough. It's time to apply what you've learned. Adaptability is not buckling under pressure. Adaptability is not losing your moral compass. Adaptability is raising your voice. You gotta start thinking about the future. You've gotta start thinking about sustainability. You gotta start thinking about future generations. Your perspective, how you see this thing, how you approach this thing, your, the angles that you take, the approaches, the mentalities, just one little tweak in the game and there is a future for your family. And, 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 and this is the power of understanding that if I can make a few tweaks, if I, if I can make a few adjustments, if I can see this thing just a hair differently, winner by hair, have you ever heard that? There are champions that win by hair because they made an adjustment. There are golf players and basketball players and football players and soccer players and fighters and warriors and NASCAR drivers and champions and lecturers and teachers and students, movie directors and artists and people all over the globe who have made adjustments, who have adapted to a circumstance, who have adapted, who have modified and tweaked their game and beat on their craft and got the trophy 
This is why there's power in mentorship because a mentor will show you something you didn't see. A coach will pull something out of you that you never knew was there. The ability to adapt, to make a tweak, to make an adjustment. It's the group of employees that's been called to work two more hours. It's the team that's been called to win a championship in the snow or rain or sleet or the weather's changed or now all of a sudden the crowd is no longer cheering your name. Can you adapt? This is the question. This is the golden ticket. Everybody wants to win and everybody wants new zip codes and area codes and everybody wants impact and influence. But if I don't have adaptability, I'll never have my future. It is time to stop tiptoeing, stop straddling the fence, stop dating the idea that you could be successful and it's time to get married to it. Get married to it, get committed, get all in. You keep dating it, you keep thinking about it, you keep talking about it. It is possible to fully commit yourself to something. It is possible to accomplish what you see in your head, to hold it in your hand. It is possible. The question is, can you give your all? If you want breakthrough, then this must be your moment of release. When you say, Marcus, how do I release? I need to acknowledge what happened to me. I need to acknowledge what they did, what they said, what they did not do, how they lied, how they punctured, how they fractured, how they stepped and stomped on the hope that was in me, how they let me down, how now I've got diminished expectations, but now I'm going to release it. I want this thing off my back and out of my system, purged from my heart. I don't want to think about it anymore. One day I just woke up and I told myself I would never be broke or broken again. I had enough. I wanted to make sure my mother was good for the rest of her life. I wanted to make sure my wife didn't have to work another day in her life. I wanted to make sure I could sow into my family that I could advance the human race forward. Why am I here? And the moment that I discovered that, everything began to change. It's time. It's time to break through the disempowering limited belief systems that we've carried our whole life. There was a future that I desire. I believe in the power of my future. And so if we want to step into this transformative experience, then I need to have a competitive advantage over the competition. Where well, you say, man, I'm in competition with nobody, just me. And I get that, and I've said that. But the truth of the matter is, is if you don't do something the other man is not doing, then you're gonna get knocked off. If you want longevity, if you want sustainability, if you want to scale, if you want peak performance, if you're going to do something in your bloodline, if you're going to pass something down generationally, if you're going to be a light, if you're going to do something that's never been done, then sometimes you're going to have to get up when you don't feel like it. I refuse to go down. I refuse to stop here. I refuse to let go. I refuse to give in. I refuse to keep living at 50%. Wake up. It is time. It is time for transformation. It is time to unlock resilience and ignite energy and vitality. This is my year that I give everything I have. You've got the strategy. You've done your homework. You've got the belief system. Now just put it in. Stop doubting yourself. You got to learn to practice self-compassion and remember your past achievements. Everything that was hindering me, all of a sudden, wham, I hit a state of elevation. Everything that was toxic, everything that was not for me, everything that was not life-giving, I can get very clear on the future. I can get my agenda, my targets, and my aims crystallized in my head. You're going to learn how to find your validation from within, that you don't need anybody to validate you, to affirm you, to believe you. First, it starts with you. If I believe in me, then everybody else comes after that. This is the year that I get crystal clear on my values, on my parameters, on my non-negotiables. This is the year that I make an investment in myself. This is the year. This is not the year that I play around with my life. The world can wait, right? Emails can wait. Text messages can wait. 
The boardroom can wait. The playing field can wait. The court can wait. Everything can wait. And I can get dialed in with what I've been called to do. I can get dialed in with why I'm here. What is my purpose without any outside influences or stimuli? I don't need coffee right now. I don't need alcohol. I don't need an outside stimuli to get my day jump started. I just need to get up and get down here. Shake it up. Wake up early, man. Get up. If you're listening to me, get up, get up, get up, get up. It's time to go. You got work to do. Put away the devices. Put away the distractions. Put away the outside stimuli and the influences and all of the voices and get dialed in if you're listening to me. Let this be a moment of transformation and motivation, but let this moment not just move you, but change you to take action. If all I know is the swirl of business distraction and noise and people and voices and devices, all of a sudden when I wake up and the world is sleeping, I get a different perspective. This is the day that you smile more. This is the day that you believe. This is the day that you see the future. This is the day that you step into hope, that you step into joy. This is the day that you repay people's rudeness with kindness. This is the day that you are not easily triggered. This is the day that you snap out of it. This is the day that you pray for your haters, that you forgive those who have wronged you. This is that day. This is the day that everything is going to change because change started with you. This is not the year that I sit and wait for destiny to hunt me down. I will hunt everything down that belongs to me. The reason why your days don't go the way you anticipate, you hoped they would go, is because you're stepping into your day without a plan. You are directionless. You are not groomed. You are not prepared. All of us has this power within us, this force of nature that we have not tapped into. There's another level. Life is lived on levels and these levels are unlocked by taking action. My question to you is, will you take action and do something out of your paradigm? Is your time, is your turn, the wait is over? Get up and get back to yourself. We can get so wrapped up in the swirl of busyness, distraction and noise that we lose ourselves hanging out with status quo. Life is not just a game of attraction. It is a game of hunting. It is a game of evolving to become the best version of yourself, putting in the work. What is it that has not been attracted to you? When I understand who I am and where I am, I position myself for attraction. This ain't about the law of attraction. This is about dealing with me first and the dream that God has given me and the purpose and everything else will be added. Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the year that I don't make excuses. This is the year that I embrace my non-negotiables. This is the year that if I see it in my head, I can hold it in my hand. Stop devaluing your past achievements. There are things that you have accomplished. There are things that you have overcome. People have neglected you. People have overlooked you. People have underrated you and you overcame it. Life has hit you as hard as it could and you're still alive. And you can hear my voice and you're listening to me now. Don't devalue that. That is an achievement. That is a win. I know that you've got this broad stroke vision and that you see the end game. But there are things along the way that we accomplish that we cannot ignore. I am somebody. I am good enough. I am growing. I am growing wiser. I am growing stronger. There is something more. Whoever you are and wherever you are, if you can hear my voice, you made it another day. And that's something to get excited about. Even if you've lost all hope and you've lost all motivation, I need you to understand that you can recover it all right now. You may not have all the motivation. You may not have all the peace about your situation. You may not be exactly where you want to be. If you can hear my voice, you made it one more day, and that is worth something. You are a moment. You are a memory. Everybody that you encounter today lives will be marked forever because you brought your A-game. You brought everything you could to touch that life. And you may never be here again. So today, give it all you have. This is your time. Make this your moment to no longer be a prisoner of the past. Of the past 
is not your prison. The past is your platform to build what it is that you were placed in this world to build. Release your brilliance. Release the idea. Step out. Launch it. Build it. Create it. Imagine it. The time is now. I want to get crystal clear on my level one priorities. A wise man once said that our dreams never grow wings in the stillness of the night. They take shape by the moves we make. That failure has come again and again as sure as night follows the day. But there is no wisdom in our mistakes unless we avoid repeating them. And while our future may inspire us, today will define us. This is your moment to decide. Will you continue on living the life that you have lived? Or will you unlock your greatest potential? This talk, this moment, this speech, this video is for those who are unwilling to settle for less. Those who are done with just enough. Those who are done with poverty and lack. You are inches away from the best life that you have ever had. Seize the opportunity. I need you to breathe. Let this thing go. Release it from your system. And remember, in this very moment, that all you have is all you need. But let's be honest, a lot of what we do is for the attention of everybody. I'm thinking to myself, when are we gonna do this thing? Cause we're just called to do it. I don't need to impress you, are we understanding this? Many of you listening to me are suffering from anxiety and stress and overwhelm. You're checked out. You're about to burn out and tap out and drop out. Some of us are not willing to acknowledge that we are depressed. And when I unpack depression, deep rest, that we are resting in a state of paralysis where we can't move, we're stuck, we're stagnant, and we're stationary. It's all because you are infected with the disease of people pleasing. Trust me, I get it. A lot of what we do is to serve people, is to help people, to empower people. I get it. But you've got to get so in love with what you've been called to do, your design, your distinctives, what sets you apart, that you'll do this thing. Even if nobody celebrates you, if nobody understands it, if nobody invests in it, if nobody sees it, if nobody wants to collaborate with you, your first year of releasing what it is that you've been called to release or writing or building or creating, if it's just you, will you keep working? And this is all I want to ask you today. Will you keep working? Will you work harder? Will you work smarter? Even if nobody understands it, sees it, celebrates it, likes it, shares it, will you keep going? Today, I let the past go. Today, I'm moving on. Number one, I'm acknowledging that I've got some challenges in my present and they derive from my past. This is more than an invitation to the future. This is a command to leave your past behind. This is a charge to you in this moment to let it go. You gotta let it go. And so if you're listening to me and you're struggling with feelings of low self-esteem, if you have a hard time saying I'm no, if you're consistently the type of person that apologizes for everything you do, if you neglect your own needs or take blame for something somebody else did, if you pretend to agree with everybody to avoid conflict, then you may be infected with the disease of people pleasing. People pleasing is a type of disorder. People that want to please people, people that need attention, people that need to be supported and loved and appreciated. If you don't love you first and appreciate you first and honor the work first and believe first, nobody else is going to believe. If I want to be free in my present and in my future, I got to let it go. 
And so I am aware of what happened to me. I am aware of the trauma. I am aware of the betrayal. I am aware that I am downtrodden and I am battered and broken and weary and tired and I'm stuck in a place of autopilot where I don't even know what tomorrow looks like. I'm not even free enough to dream about the future because I am so broken from my past. And so one of the next things you're going to have to do is that once you're aware of this state, that you are stuck and stationary and that you live a stagnant type of lifestyle, I'm understanding the trauma effects on my brain and how it changed my behavior. It changed my perspective. I understand what happened to me and I cannot change it, but I can change how I feel about it. I can choose to forgive. I can choose to let go. I can choose to believe. I can choose to dream. I think that it would be so beautiful, so elegant, so sophisticated so terribly significant if we will start to create, to build, to collab, to be a life-giving force to help somebody. If I just spread my seeds and if I just water where I need to water, that harvest is going to come. So just work harder and get out of this people-pleasing mentality. There's too many of you that are so wrapped up in agreement with people that are not serving your vision. This is my opportunity for growth, for expansion. The more I release, the more I can become. And the more I become, the more I can attract. What is it that has not been attracted to you? Here's my truth. You can listen to me or not listen to me. I'm going to release what's inside of me. I'm going to release my brilliance. I'm going to build it. I'm going to create it. I'm going to release it. I'm going to give it to the world. And so whoever's going to listen to me is going to listen to me. Whoever's going to support it will support it. Whoever's going to invest will invest. Whoever's going to hire me will hire me. But I'm not doing this thing just for the attention. Stop doing this for the collaboration. Stop doing this for the attention. Stop doing everything with a motive that's not life-giving and life-transforming. If you just want to be seen. Whatever you can't let go of, whatever you can't get over, you have made it an idol. And it simply means that you love it or them more than you love yourself. The question I want to ask you is, how bad do you want your future? People that are not focused on people, but they're focused on their calling, they've got a positive self-awareness, they've got positive self-esteem, they've got powerful self-control. They walk in a measure of mastery with self-awareness, self-esteem, self-control, self-motivation, self-expectancy, self-image, self-direction, self-discipline, self-projection. Like, what do I believe? What am I expecting? Whatever it is you've been called to read or write or build or create, some of you are in the process of transforming your body. Some of you are in the process of elevating your mindset, establishing new relationships. Do this because you're called to do it, not because you need attention. Just do the work. Push harder, reach farther, run faster. If an item can be repurposed, then so can a person. Be the anomaly. Be the one who can step into a room and shift the atmosphere with a confidence and a resilience and a grit because you put the work in. When nobody was paying attention, you paid the price. Let me tell you something. Amputation without forgiveness is like a virus. Marcus, what are you saying? This means that if you try to go away, if you try to move from it, if you try to get a new area code and a new zip code and a new career, that's just busyness. That's artificial significance. You gotta forgive this person because going away and changing your zip code and changing your area code and trying to get a new career and marrying somebody else is not going to take the pain away because you are running from you. You gotta look in the mirror and you gotta decide, I forgive myself for the mistakes I made. I forgive the people for what they did. Everybody wants new, but don't want to become new. It's time to become new. It's your time, it's your turn to live a life of abundance in the fullness of joy and peace and fire and passion and resilience. This is your time. Make this your moment to no longer be a prisoner of the past. The past is not your prison. The past 
is your platform to build what it is that you were placed in this world to build. Release your brilliance. Release the idea. Step out. Launch it. Build it. Create it. Imagine it. The time is now. The truth is, some of us prefer familiar sufferings because we are afraid of the unknown. And for many of you listening to me, joy and peace and abundance in the fullness of life is so unknown, it is so uncharted that you are afraid to release, you are afraid 